Okay, well, welcome everyone. Thanks for attending and taking time out of your day to join us for this presentation on uh, unlocking the power of AI for your small business. My name is Jasper. I'm with SCORE Maine. Uh, here with Dan, who's also with SCORE. Uh, we are happy to have all of you here. Uh, and as I said, this presentation is being recorded. Uh, and we'll send it out at the end, as well as the slide deck that's used. And if you have any questions or uh, comments, uh, feel free to put them in the Q&A or chat. Um, without further ado, Dan, why don't you take it away? Yeah, thank you, Jasper. And I uh, also wanted to say thank you to Katie Palmer, uh, who's here with us as well. Uh, this webinar was co-sponsored by the Kennebec Valley Chamber and the Lewis and Auburn Metro Chamber. Uh, we do love our local chambers of commerce at SCORE, so we do very much appreciate uh, the work that they do. Uh, Katie, are you with us here today? Hi, it's actually Nicole Poulin joining. Katie's on vacation uh, this week, so I, she asked me to step in her, her shoes today. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for having me. <laughs> Would you like to, to mention a little bit about the chamber? Just uh, do a little quick shout out. Uh, yeah, um, I'm actually joining from my car because I unfortunately had to pick up my daughter at the same time. Um, so I apologize for any background noise. Um, but yeah, we have a lot going on and coming up. Uh, we're entering into the warm, fun months. Uh, so we have River Fest coming up, our annual awards, um, and we hope to see everyone at all of our events this year. Uh, and we're also very excited for this AI discussion. Um, Shanna and I have dabbled with chat GPT um, for writing social posts and things like that. So we're excited to learn more about that. Yeah, there are a ton of different applications for AI, a, a bunch of different use cases, and we're gonna get into a lot of them today. And uh, not just Chappy G GPT, but some uh, you know different ways that small businesses can use AI beyond that as well. Yeah, it's a really good tool. Um, we're excited to dive into it a lot. And without further ado, I'll go ahead and get started. Thank you to everyone for joining us today. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Today we are covering... Uh, my name is Dan Reed with SCORE Maine, and we are covering how AI can help improve your business. Uh, AI is a really big topic. Uh, when people say AI, um, it's a huge buzzword nowadays, and it used to mean machine it used to mean machine learning, which is the same thing. But artificial intelligence is basically a computer program or a piece of software that can learn as it goes or that uh, gets better at things, or you can interact with it in a way where uh, over time, it's going to give you a better and better result rather than the same result every time. And the way that someone interacts with an AI is through a prompt. This is gonna be pretty consistent amongst every different kind of AI tool that you work with. Uh, the AI is going to need some kind of input from you, which we call a prompt, in order for it to execute some kind of task. And the context of that prompt is incredibly important. Uh, AI only has the information that you provided in the prompt and the information that it was trained on. Uh, basically, what that means is uh, all AIs are trained on a data model. And if it doesn't have that information that you're looking for or the context that you're hoping for it to integrate in its data model or in your prompt, then it's going to have a really hard time giving you the outcome that you're looking for. One of the biggest parts about uh, that prompt development, as you might you might hear people call it prompt engineering, is iteration. So trying things over and over, trying it differently, you know, adding a few words here or there, or asking it to come from a different angle, or maybe it needs to be longer or shorter. Iteration and refinement are really key to getting the outcome that you're looking for when you're kind of working with an AI tool. And uh, another thing is AI is very good at pattern recognition. This is really the key component here. Uh, what you're asking AI to do is to recognize a pattern between the data that it's used previously and match it up with the prompt that you're giving it. So when you think about like how you can use these tools, you have to kind of remember like is there is there a there there? Is there something for it that it can actually be connecting, or is there something that we're trying to get out of it? And if so, does it already have that information, and does it have something to work with? Uh, something to consider about AI is if it doesn't have that information, it will kind of make something up. 
Uh, if you are asking AI to help you with a resume, for example, and you don't provide it with previous employers or where you went to school, it will just kind of say that you graduated from University of Southern Maine with a degree. It doesn't necessarily have to be true. It just has to be. They want to have some kind of information there. And there's no real kind of data uh, validation one way or another if that data is correct. So that's really kind of on the user to see if the data that you're putting in there is correct. And if the data that any AI tool is giving you is correct, uh, you don't want to kind of just take what it gives you at face value. And uh, most AI, especially the AI that we're going to be covering uh, as a practical use case for small business, is currently very office focused or tech focused. And what I mean by that is uh, a lot of the applications are very narrow or very specific. So it's, uh, AI is not really coming for everyone's jobs quite yet. Uh, it's working on it, but a lot of the stuff that's out there and available is uh, very kind of narrowly focused on programming or marketing or technology or, or kind of something in the office uh, in the office realm. And you want to check if you have any existing software that you use, like QuickBooks uh, or any other kind of technology, Facebook, uh, Instagram, check and see if there are new AI tools or new AI solutions or new features that have come to that software before you dip your toes into a similar software. It could be that the service that you're already using has an AI tool that will work perfectly for you and you don't have to pay for another service uh, to get the same result. And uh, we have a, an image here on the right that kind of asks, I asked ChatGPT, can you give me some resources for starting a business in Maine? And as you can see, it gave us a quite a long list of great resources. And you can uh, even see that we got a nice shout out for SCORE there at the bottom. And uh, that gives you kind of like an understanding of a little bit of an idea. What can ChatGPT really do or what can AI really do with a really basic prompt? Uh, and it kind of helped consolidate that resource uh, research that I might be doing later and give it to me all at once. Uh, Another thing to be worried about with AI, uh, or one thing to be worried about with AI is terms and conditions. So you wanna make sure you really read through the terms and conditions for any AI tool that you're utilizing. And this is really true for any software that you utilize, but uh, AI tools are really moving at a very rapid pace. So you wanna make sure that the terms and conditions that you're agreeing to are things that make sense for your business. Uh, what this could look like is uh, if you put data into an AI tool, let's say you put in a bunch of your customer information to get a better idea of uh, your target market. Uh, it will just, it now has that customer information. If a similar business were to go, hey, I'm looking for customers in this field or that field, uh, it could potentially use some of the data that you provided it and give that data to someone else. In the, use, uh, in the terms and conditions, you might be able to have a private thread or a private stream for your AI tool where it won't share that data. Uh, that's something that you might want to look for. Uh, you'll want to check your terms uh, and conditions for ownership rights over the output. So if you do go to ChatGPT and it gives you something that you want to post on your website or on Facebook, can you legally do that? Do you have the commercial rights to post that? With ChatGPT and Google Bard in particular, you do own the outputs, so you will uh, own that data. But it's something you want to keep in mind. Uh, not all AI tools have that, or not all, all AI tools are used for commercial purposes. So you'll just want to double check and, and make sure that you're not, uh, you know, putting yourself in a risky situation legally. And similar to checking. Uh, if your pre if your existing software vendors have uh, any tools available that might be useful to you, make sure that you're checking for reputable vendors. That's really why you want to check with folks who already who you're already working with. You already find them reputable. Uh, there are a million tools out there that all say they do the same thing with AI, and it's not necessarily true. And they might not do it to the same degree. So you want to do your do your legwork and, and really make sure that you're choosing vendors that you trust and that you think have your best interest in mind. Many AI models are also currently trained on existing work. Uh, and what I mean by that is things like blogs or in the case of image generation AI, existing artwork. 
And it does not provide credit or sourcing information for those blogs or existing artwork that it's based on. And that could very likely uh, turn into a legal battle down the road. Uh, maybe not necessarily for the end user, but it will turn into a legal battle for the folks who have made these AI models. Uh, they might not necessarily have permission to train these models on uh, non-commercially available work. And that's just something you want to keep in mind. You might have to, in the future, go through and validate the marketing uh, or any AI-provided uh, imagery or text uh, to make sure that it doesn't uh, violate copyright law. And the best way to do that is just to use a trusted vendor in the first place that you know isn't going to be doing that, or at least is advertising that they're not going to have that problem. All right, so that's kind of the high level overview of AI. So what does all this really mean? How is it actually useful? What am I talking about? When you hear ChatGPT or Google Bard or now known as Google Gemini uh, or Claude, these are really the AI tools. When people talk about AI, this is the one that we're always hearing about. This is the one that people typically mean. And what that means is it's a natural language processing model. And uh, basically it understands words in the same way that a human would understand words. Whereas previously computers would really interact with words in the form of uh, ones and zeros. Now it actually breaks it down into uh, words and word choice. So that means that it can understand context. It can understand previous context. And, uh, these kinds of models are trained on lots of text data. It's usually trained on uh, a freely available pages on the internet. The two big players are ChatGPT and Google Gemini. And I would consider these both the starting point. So if you haven't used AI before and you're really looking to get into it or you're interested in what's available, I would start here. Uh, sign up for ChatGPT or Google Bard uh, or Gemini. They're both free. You can really test out what it can do for you and maybe do some research on a project or, uh, you know, get some wording right on some marketing that you're working in, working on and really kind of test out what's available and how it can help your workflow. The areas that I found that these to be uh, the most useful in is speeding up your admin work. So those things in the office that take a long time that, uh, you know, you wish you just had somewhere to start or maybe something to edit down. This is perfect for that application. And uh, you'll see on the right side here, we have a, uh, a prompt guide. These are very popular. You can find them all over the internet. Uh, this is just kind of an, a, a way to interface a little bit more and, and do that iteration. So maybe you want to change the tone a little bit of the uh, the outcome of your, or the, of the, um, of the uh, output provided by the AI tool so you can uh, make some tone suggestions like, hey, I'd like this to sound a little more professional, or I, I'd like the scope of this to kind of increase a little bit. And you can also set temperature, which is kind of how creative you you would like the, the AI tool to be. Uh, a high temperature is a little more creative and a little more diverse and a low temperature is a little more even keel. So text generation uses, what can I actually use this for? Uh, a great use is blog posts. Maybe you're looking to uh, start writing a blog or someone has told you that, you know, hey, you should really get a blog up. It will be good for your website. Uh, AI is a great starting point for that. You might want to edit it and make sure that it's not, uh, you know, in violation of any copyright or anything like that. But uh, ChatGPT or Gemini are a great way to really start that process and get, get things moving. Uh, you can also use it for brainstorming, kind of like the next step down. You want to get your thoughts together for something uh, that you're looking to present or maybe a blog that you're looking to write and you want to get a list. Uh, asking the, an AI tool for a, a good starting point is a great way to do that. And then you can iterate and refine from there. It's great at summarizing a document. If you have the paid version of these tools, you can upload uh, documents and then you can ask it for a summary or you can just copy and paste it in there. Uh, you can copy and paste an email and ask it to help you write a response. Uh, this can be really helpful for those emails where, uh, you know, maybe it's a long email and it's a little tricky and you just kind of, you want something or somewhere to start, or maybe it's at the end of the day and you're a little burnt out and you just need to get this email off to somebody. Uh, it can also do other things like creating a task list. If someone sends you a long email uh, or maybe minutes from a meeting and you have uh, these meeting notes, 
uh, you can create a task list from those notes by just asking it to do so. Or you can try making a like a SWOT analysis or a marketing plan or a customer analysis or anything that's a little more in depth and you need help with that brainstorming session. This is a really good place to start. It can help you get through all of your brainstorming and really bring something with uh, meat on the bones to the table. But of course, with these tools, you want to double check and make sure that it doesn't have any data errors. You want to make sure that you're you're double checking at every at every step that if it gives you information, it's not giving you incorrect information. And if you don't know, I would recommend not using it. Uh, what I mean by that is, if you don't know if the information is correct, then don't use it. And this is kind of the other side of the coin. And when you hear about AI, you hear about text generation and image generation. So we'll talk a little bit about image generation and things to look out for and keep in mind. Uh, the image that you see on the screen is an image that was created with an AI tool called Runway. And the prompt that I used to create it was a person comfortably enjoying the beach. And at a quick glance, I think a lot of people wouldn't be able to tell that this was an AI photo and it would, it would be great for something like a blog post. Uh, with image generation is a little different. Uh, quality does kind of trump over quantity. And what I mean by that is when you're typically working with an image generation tool, you'll have a certain number of tokens every month, maybe a hundred. And each image might cost one, two or four tokens. So really to kind of dialing in on uh, what you wanna see before you start generating images will help you save your tokens and just be a little more economical uh, with generating images. Uh, some of the things that you might want to experiment with once you have the uh, what you're looking for is perspective or angle. Try a different focal point. Uh, maybe for this image example, uh, we might want to back off another 10 or 15 feet to get a wider shot of the beach. Uh, that's something you could ask it to do, and it will generate something that's uh, either this or very similar to this that's just a little bit back off a bit and a little bit wider. Uh, you, you can attach reference images uh, when doing image generation with some tools, and that's a great place to get started if you're looking to uh, kind of get something that looks similar to what uh, you already see, but not the exact same thing. You want it to be unique. And it's a great way to kind of save on your tokens as well if you don't want to kind of iterate to that point where uh, you have something that you like, but it only needs a few changes. And don't be afraid to experiment with variation and iteration to get the image you're looking for. You just want to be cognizant of the number of tokens that you might be using while you're doing that. And uh, some examples of image generation AI tools are DALI, uh, Midjourney, and Getty, Getty Generative AI from Getty Images. Uh, and of course, Runway, which I used for this image here. So what are some of the things you can use image generation for? What are some of the use cases? Uh, the first one that pops to mind for me as a marketing guy is marketing collateral. Uh, social media posts or images for a blog would be amazing, especially if you're using a reference image that uh, might look like your brand and you can get some brand colors in there. That'd be great. Uh, maybe you're looking to update your, uh, your headshot on social media or your Facebook. Uh, you can take a selfie with your phone and there are AI tools that will remove the background and generative fill a new background in there for you. Uh, or maybe you need to, you're, you're getting started with a new product, you don't have a prototype yet and you just want to get an idea of what it would look like or you're developing a, a new area or you you want to redesign or remodel your store and you want to see what it might look like. You can do a product visualization and get a, a good idea or a good representation of what you're hoping to go for. You can do things like create a flyer. Canva has an amazing uh, marketing tools that are uh, designed around uh, using AI for creating promotional materials or infographics. Uh, the big thing here is just to make sure that at with every other step in the process, that the images that you're using are commercially safe to use. It won't always be the case, but most of the time it will be, it's just something you want to keep an eye out for. What are some of the downsides of using image generation? Well, just like text generation, it doesn't always know when it's got something right or when it has something wrong. Uh, using Runway, the same AI model from the previous photo, I asked it to come up with a person in a beach wheelchair enjoying the beach. Even with a reference image, this AI tool could not figure out what a beach wheelchair is. If you're unfamiliar, it's a piece of handicap accessible equipment so folks can uh, enjoy the beach if they use a wheelchair. 
And uh, the best they could do was put a person in a, a regular wheelchair on the beach. So that's what I have available. And it kind of shows the limitations. Maybe in the future, this AI tool might be able to uh, correctly account for a beach wheelchair, but right now it can't. So we're going to get into another. We've kind of covered the two big areas of AI with text generation and image generation. We're going to get into some specialized AI tools. Uh, these are going to be use cases uh, that are incredibly helpful depending on uh, your specific need. Uh, many of the tools that I'll cover have overlapping features and qualities, and uh, you'll just want to make sure that you're choosing one that fits your, uh, your use case the best and the things that you need to do the best. And AI can kind of you know, you, you'll you be able to set your own budget and know how much you'll want to spend a month on AI, but spending, uh, you know, a certain amount of subscription every month to fix a specific problem is something that you'll have to make sure that you're comfortable with and you're willing to spend that money every month to solve that problem and that that tool does the right job for you. Uh, and I've organized the following lists so that tools at the bottom of the list will be a little bit more complex. And uh, so if you're looking for something that's a little more simple, just look at the top of the list. Or if you're looking for something that uh, you can really dive into and get started with, uh, feel free to pick from uh, anything that I have listed. And tools that I personally use uh, and I use very regularly are marked in green. So if you have any questions about those tools in particular, I can give you uh, very in-depth information on that. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm a marketing guy. So my first slide here is on marketing. Uh, I would highly recommend if you don't use Canva to give it a go and get started. Uh, it has AI designs and graphics for social media posts and other marketing placements. Uh, I feel like it does a great job. You can upload your brand colors and your uh, choice for typography or font to Canva, and it will automatically change all of its templates to match your brand colors and font. And then you can insert these uh, image generated uh, or generated images into their templates. And it's just a very quick and easy way to make good looking marketing materials. You can see this image here on the left uh, was an image that I created with Canva using their magic media tool, uh, using the prompt of a mentor giving advice to a small business owner and a bistro. If you just glance at this, it you, know, you can't really tell, but if you start looking at how many fingers they have, it starts to get a little suspicious. That's something you want to keep in mind with your marketing materials is uh, at a glance that typically work really well if it's AI image generated and it will eventually over time get better at this. But at the moment, it's still it can still be a little clunky. Uh, Square uh, is a great website tool. A lot of people use Square or Squarespace. Uh, it has a built in photo environment for e-commerce that will do things like remove the background on images. So if you have a, a new product that you're looking to list on your website, you can take a photo of it. It will automatically remove the background and make a listing for you, which is phenomenal for a small business looking to get started on e-commerce and getting online. Uh, Constant Contact has a new AI tool that's helping develop sections of your newsletters or newsletter content. Uh, I think it's really effective, especially if you uh, don't already have uh, a newsletter and you're, you, you know someone's told you that you need to build your email list. Constant Contact has a great starting point for, uh, for you to build off of using their tools. There's a, a company called Marketing Blocks that develops uh, marketing assets in different aspect ratios. So similar to Canva, where they have those templates that resize, it will resize uh, marketing assets for different placements. So like banner ads on websites or an Instagram post, and they'll have the same look and feel and use the same images and the same colors. Uh, really interesting tool. And there's also FeedHive, which uh, is a great tool. Maybe you've had uh, a social media account for a long time and uh, you're looking to recycle some of the materials that you've posted. They call it evergreen content that still would be uh, worthwhile content to post today. FeedHive will go into your account, look at previous content that did well on your channel and uh, build new social media posts for you to schedule into your content calendar using that tool. A very helpful tool if you're an existing organization. Uh, speaking of content, if you uh, want to make something that's a little more in-depth and you're looking for uh, maybe video content or you're looking for, uh, you know, some use cases on uh, specific tools that will help you design your marketing materials a little more in-depth than Canva will, 
Uh, Photoshop is a great place to start. They have their new generative fill feature, which I have highlighted here on the right. Uh, I took this picture of a cruise ship in Portland, uh, kind of towering over all the other buildings in the area uh, with the water slide on top. I thought it looked interesting, but I didn't really like all the cars in the foreground. So I just asked Photoshop to remove the cars. And on the bottom image, you can see that there aren't any cars on the road. Uh, you will notice that there are a lot of extra uh, windows on the, the main pier, but that's just, it had to put something in there and that was the pattern that it saw. So it isn't gonna be perfect, but at first glance, it looks really good. Uh, there's also things like Runway or Steve AI or Synthesia, which will allow you to do things like edit auto, audio and video, or even in Synthesia's case, it will create what they call a talking head for you. So you upload a few photos and it will create a version of you using your voice uh, that will speak to your audience based on a script that you give it. And it will even lip sync the text script. Uh, it's kind of in that uncanny valley territory where it's a little weird, but if you do a lot of videos where you, you know, you're talking to your audience or you're talking to your customers, this could be a really helpful way to kind of speed that workflow up and connect the dots. And then there are also tools like Lumen AI, which is a natural language processing AI, which transforms text content into videos using a drag and drop interface. So this will be uh, the very basics where you give it a prompt, like I wanna make a video on marketing my business and uh, or marketing my client's business. And it will go through and uh, give you assets that you can drag and drop based off of the, a breakdown of your prompt to create a short marketing video. Uh, very interesting tools that uh, have been, I would say, pretty useful. And most of these tools, if not all of these tools, I think all of these tools actually are commercially available. So you can use any of these tools uh, on your existing marketing. We also have copywriting and SEO. This is a one of those areas that you want to be very careful in, especially as the uh, AI tools have all been trained, and the NLP tools have all been trained on existing work. So one of my favorite tools with that is Grammarly, which can not only analyze your tone uh, and your grammar, but it can in your style, but it can also do a, uh, a check to see whether or not this is copyrighted material and it will come back with a percentage. So if you write something in uh, ChatGPT and you ask Grammarly to give it a look over, it will tell you, you know, hey, you might want to, to rewrite this or, you know, this section here really kind of looks like it was copied and pasted from this website. Uh, which I found to be invaluable. And there are also two really great tools for copywriting. Uh, one for making blogs and marketing focused content, Copy AI, which will integrate your uh, SEO keywords very seamlessly into the copy. And Jasper AI, which generates human-like text. So uh, if you've ever read something from ChatGPT, it can be very verbose. It uses a lot of uh, adjectives. Jasper AI writes things a lot more like human speech. So it's kind of specialized on making it sound like a person wrote it rather than an AI, which is something that I think a lot of people are gonna get jaded to in the next few years. And of course, with copywriting and SEO, be sure to provide enough original content to avoid plagiarism, or at the very least use a tool like Grammarly where you can check for plagiarism. All right, so this is where we get into some very interesting use cases, uh, things like bookkeeping and accounting. Uh, you might already have an app on your phone, or you might use it on QuickBooks where you can take a photo of the receipt uh, and automate the tracking and expenses uh, for your business, like Auto Expensify or Auto Entry or Expensify. These are existing AI tools that you might have been using for a few years already. And uh, the next step down the road with that is uh, these larger platforms like Xero and QuickBooks. Uh, creating their own large language models. So it's almost like a chat GPT for your books that you'll be able to talk to almost like a CPA. And it'll give you some advice and, and some suggestions on how you might be able to better utilize your books. Uh, there are also things like Clockwork AI and Fathom AI, which will do things like cash flow forecasting, scenario forecasting, and financial models for your business. These are phenomenal tools, but uh, not a replacement for sound financial advice. But if you have been told, maybe you have a score mentor and your mentor has told you, hey, you should really look into getting a cash flow projection. This is a great way to do that. 
Uh, there are also some tools out there that will claim to help you file your taxes. Uh, that's not something that I would be comfortable recommending to anyone. Uh, user beware, but it's just an idea for what is coming down the pipeline. Uh, and for sales, there are tools like Grab AI. So let's say you're using uh, Salesforce or some other customer management software, or I'm sorry, let's say you're using uh, QuickBooks or some other form of uh, accounting software. Uh, Grab AI will provide insights on your customer purchasing habits as long as you're putting all of your purchase orders into the software. That might look like uh, one of your clients always does a big order in November. In October, that software lets you know, hey, you might want to call Mike. He usually orders triple his normal amount in November's. And that's a great way to kind of get ahead of the game with sales and uh, be ready so that you can try to upsell that customer. Uh, Salesforce is uh, coming out with their own large language model that lets you query your customer management or relationship management software about prospects directly. So it's almost as if you had a specialist who the only thing they do is worry about your customer, your CRM and Salesforce. And you can kind of talk to them about things like, hey, when was the last time we talked to Mike? Uh, Grab AI told me that he normally gets a bigger shipment in November. And I just want to make sure I haven't emailed him already this week. Uh, you have uh, Exceed by Genesis. You, we hear about chatbots all the time. That's a very common use for AI. I find this one to be a little bit more interesting because it is an email assistant rather than a website assistant. What that looks like is if uh, you take appointments, it will schedule appointments in your calendar automatically and then send those details to the person who's looking to schedule a meeting with you. Uh, obviously, you want to make sure you block out time that you don't want this to be able to automatically schedule appointment times for you but a very interesting way to kind of take that off your plate and to focus a little bit more on other emails while this is scheduling uh, those admin emails for you. And then finally, we have KnowledgeNet for sales, which tracks connections across your business, employees, and social networks. And it will let you know how closely a prospect is to who in your company and uh, how they know them. This is a very useful tool for larger businesses or you know bigger small businesses that have... Uh, you know, they might have a few salespeople or they might have a team and they're looking to kind of really leverage and utilize the team's connections or network. Uh, a really great way to be able to reach out to uh, folks who you might want to prospect in, in the best way possible and turn a cold lead into a warm lead. And our last category, we have organization. Uh, this is a great way for uh, you know folks to keep on top of things and, and try to speed up that that back of, back of house or, or the office work uh, and really get into the work that matters for your business. Uh, one thing that I use all the time is Zoom AI Summary. Uh, it's a tool built into Zoom. We're actually probably using it in this webinar right now that will provide a summary of the meeting by the subject. So we'll go over each subject in the meeting, provide a little summary, and it will even have a little uh, action task list at the bottom. Uh, if you're doing minutes for a meeting, for example, uh, it can say, Dan said he was going to do this, or Dan said he was going to do that. A very useful tool. The next step up from that is Fireflies, which actually joins your, your meeting as a bot. And uh, it will record the meeting and provide those similar kind of automatic notes. But you can click on those notes, and uh, it will pull up uh, a little video in timestamp of where that is in the chat. So you can actually get the direct context from the notes. A uh, very interesting tool. One of my favorite tools is uh, a note-taking app called Reflect, which you can see here on the right-hand side. Uh, all of these blue links uh, link back to other notes that I've had with that person. So for every time I've had a meeting with Dave, I can click on Dave's name here and see all of the other meeting notes that I have that relate to Dave or all the other meetings that Dave was in that I was also in. Uh, or for a particular topic, like a marketing strategy, I can click on that and look at the marketing strategy and see all the notes that are linked to the marketing strategy and all the times we had meetings about that. Very useful for organization, uh, especially if you, you're not best with timing like myself. And then last, we have rationale which uh, if you're looking to make a decision, maybe you're in the startup phase and, you, and you're really kind of shifting a lot with your business, uh, it's a great way to kind of really get an understanding of the, the decision-making or a pros and cons list or a SWOT analysis for what you're looking for. 
give you a, like a solid overview and help you make that decision. Uh, very interesting tool for that. And uh, that is all of the use cases that I have uh, for today. So thank you very much for joining us. Please, uh, we have a few questions in the chat, but please feel free to put more questions in the chat room. We will get to them. We have time. And uh, we will start, I will start answering questions now. Uh, I have a question here from Susan. Is it possible when doing a Google search to not have the AI response show? So that is a new update by Google. That's not something that there's currently a setting for. And unfortunately, I do think that uh, Google is probably going to be going in this direction a little more permanently. I don't think they're going to roll this back. And uh, it has been very bad for on-page SEO. So Google will just kind of summarize the information you put out there and people don't end up visiting your web page. For, for smaller businesses, this is, this is probably not going to be great, but uh, Google is not going back on that one. So we have from Jen on bookkeeping and accounting AI tools. How is the security? That's something uh, you'll want to keep in mind when you're uh, working with the when you're working with one of these companies. The security is going to be as good as it is with any other uh, business out there. If it's a larger business, they're probably going to be more secure. Uh, they're probably going to be more likely to be attacked. For example, I mean, if you really trust QuickBooks with your books then it's already going to be fine with anything else that you're using it for, such as these AI tools. Uh, Zero is another very trusted software, so it's it's going to be just as secure as, as that tool. Uh, I'm not really sure how else. Uh, is there anything else that you're looking for with that question, Jen? Just feel free to put it in the Q&A. Uh, the slides will be shared afterwards. We will be emailing this out. Uh, so all of these slides will be available to you. Can any of the tools mentioned live on a private server for security purposes? Jen, that is a great question. I don't know how likely it will be for that uh, to take place. I think over time, we might see more companies move in that direction. But at the moment, everything does take place on the cloud. Uh, there are probably individual AI companies that will make uh, an AI model for you to live on a private server, but that would probably be very expensive. Uh, I'm not sure what that'll look like, and you'll have to provide all the processing power yourself. That's something else to consider about these AI tools is a lot of them require an incredible amount of processing power, which is why they're on cloud at the moment. Uh, it is possible to potentially move some of these to a private server in the future if they provide support for that, but uh, it will it will it will require uh, quite the server. Uh, we had a question from Susan: Is there a way to limit who can see your notes created through AI groups? Uh, that's kind of one of the problems with AI at the moment is. Unless your your AI tool specifically says that it isn't going to train itself on your your uh, the notes or the the information that you put in there, which is one of the settings that you can check on Chat GPT, uh, then it it says that it won't train on your data, which means that your data won't be in uh, other AI programs. You're kind of hoping that they say that's true. Uh, Jen's question earlier about a private server is really the only way to guarantee that. But uh, it is possible, or at least companies say that that's possible at the moment. Is there a Microsoft Teams AI tool for note taking? Uh, there, I, if there is, I'm unfamiliar with it. I would be surprised if they didn't come out with something like that in the future. But at the moment, I just uh, I don't know personally. If anyone does know if that's the case, please feel free to uh, put that in the Q and A. Uh, Jen's question: Will these inf will the info enter into these tools be integrated and used to strengthen the tool? Yes, for most of these tools, not all of them. That's what they call a, a training on the AI platform. They call it. Uh, they take the data that you enter and they use it to train the tool. Uh, there are settings that you can select to uh, for certain AI tools to say that you don't want it to train on your data. We're just kind of hoping that they are following through with our choice on those settings. Uh, the easiest way would, as I mentioned earlier, probably be uh, contacting an AI developer 
who already has a tool and ask them if you can do a private server if you're very concerned about the, the data validity. Are there any training or development AI sites from Peter? Uh, Peter, can you give me a little bit more information about what you're looking for? I just want to make sure I'm answering the right question. Ah, developing people skills. Uh, with I, I'm not personally familiar with that. I think that's a really interesting idea. Uh, there are, if you get the uh, paid version of ChatGPT, which has a bunch of individually trained uh, ChatGPT bots, there might already be an existing one to train people skills out there. Uh, very interesting idea, though. I do like the way that you're thinking about it, Peter. Do we have any other questions? So it looks like we just have one come in from Craig. If you do have any more questions or if you wanna you know, revisit any slide that we've covered today, please feel free to put that in the chat. Uh, from Craig, when brainstorming, are ideas expressed during the session be discoverable to others? Uh, yes. That's a part of what we were talking about, that data, val uh, data uh, validation or training the AI tool. Any AI tool that doesn't explicitly say that it's not going to train on the data you provide it, you'll want to assume is going to use the data that you provide it. What that means is that data could pop up in another person's search result or another person's uh, answer uh, if they're looking at something similar to yours. Uh, from Susan. Let's say the directors have a meeting and use the notes feature. Uh, Susan, can you clarify for me if you're asking about the Zoom AI summary, just for clarification? Uh, we have from Becca, chatbot AI app on mobile run by ChatGPT does have a free bots that you can engage with in addition to paid ones. So that uh, that's a great tip there, Becca. Uh, Susan's question. Uh, so Susan, for it, it wouldn't be able to just ask the AI bot in, in Zoom's particular instance. Uh, what it does is it sends the summary of the meeting to the meeting host. And the meeting host has to then distribute the summary from there. There's no public facing prompt. So uh, really, when you're when you're worried about data uh, validation or or data kind of escaping from where you're hoping to keep it, you're worried about people prompting an AI tool that has access to the data. Uh, there's not a way for someone to prompt Zoom AI summary to give them information uh, because the only way it provides information is in an email to the host. Did that answer your question? Oh, perfect. All right, if, if we have any more questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Oh, it looks like we just have one come through. So if you use Fireflies, Fireflies AI to take notes, does that feedback go to the larger pool uh, or that information that just becomes available? Uh, with Fireflies, I'm not as familiar. I don't use that particular application myself. I would assume based on how the application works that the answer to that is no. Uh, one of the things about AI tools is when your input and output is in the data that you're providing it, such as Zoom AI summary or Fireflies, it can be very self-contained. It's not, you know, it's no one else is prompting on that data. Uh, it's not prompting a large table of uh, information or data for it to create its response. It's just using what you provided and then spitting out an answer to that. All right, that was the last question that I saw on my end here. Uh, I wanna thank everyone for joining us today. The recording and the slide deck for this workshop will be sent out a little bit later today. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to just send us an email. Uh, we're more than happy to uh, to help you out. And uh, if you don't have a, a mentor already, please uh, sign up for a SCORE mentor. It's incredibly helpful. They can provide one-on-one -on -one support and sit down with you and talk about your business. 
And with a SCORE mentor, you don't have to worry about that information getting out. We do have a very strict ethics clause. So our mentors uh, will not accidentally share that information with anyone in the same way that an AI tool might. So thank you everyone for your time and uh, I hope you have a great day. Bye everybody. Thank you.